pride in style in the old days. People aren't, don't have as much style in their lettering as we used to have. It was all about being original back then. But now people are emulating a lot, just wanting to seem like they're part of the scene. In graffiti anyway, style is the most important thing for me. I've been painting with spray paint since 1984. I'm quite old. There's a record shop. I mean, in fact, there was a record shop, but it's closed out now. Uh, around the records in Brighton Square. And I used to paint since about 87. Um, until only a couple of years ago, I painted album covers onto their back wall. And that's how I learned how to copy photographs and spray paint. I used to do this sort of street graffiti stuff, um, lettering and all that. But I went beyond it into what I call spray paint realism that let it do its thing rather than mimicking the photo exactly. So I don't like things to be too precise. Um, I don't like things to be too hard edged. I like, uh, like uh, impressionism to leave some, uh, leave some work for the person who looks at it to do. So they bring part of it as well. They have to interpret the shapes and the things are suggested as opposed to being um, explicit. Where I'm trying to make more traditional or classic images using spray paint, sort of to elevate the um, medium. Graffiti for me means that it's done illegally on the street somewhere. But in the modern era, people talk about graffiti just as being any anything done with a spray can, which I'm like, a bit wrong, really. Yeah, so I don't I don't call it that anymore. I just call it mural painting. I come from Australia, everyone has a garden and um, you know I've lived in London for 10 years and one thing I've never ever really really become uh, used to is, is not having a garden, living in a tiny one bedroom flat in, in East London and so it was just a natural progression to you know, gardening in the street. The Purple Gardener project uh, started as part of my masters at Central St Martins and I was really looking to do a project based around happiness and I was, I was really looking to, to sort of change something, that, you know, something, take something that was unhappy and really make it happier. And uh, through my research, you know, something that bothers everyone, you know, I found is potholes. So I thought, what can I do with a pothole to sort of transform it from this annoying, dirty thing that annoys everyone to uh, make it a little bit happier? And to start off with, they were, they were really simple. Whatever was to hand and, and create these little, little gardens and then they started to become more complex over time and I'd really try and, and build a narrative into that garden and so I started adding props, little chairs um, and I started theming them around current events. When I started the project it, it was really an experiment. I didn't expect it to go anywhere. It was just just an, an iteration of an idea. Over time it's just grown and grown and grown and I've made more and more of these gardens and I started a blog and I started making some films about them. I think part of the beauty of the project is these gardens, they're somewhere where they shouldn't be. And I think that's the surprise element is, is a big element and I, you know, I love taking my work to the street and challenging people really. I do try and garden when it's quiet so quite often I'll garden early in the morning and then I'll pop back and see it later in the day and, and watch people sort of walking past, taking photos and watch them pop up on Instagram which is really cool. Um, I, I don't really like being watched while I do it. It's just me, I'm a bit shy. My little garden's very ephemeral and, and that really challenges sort of these preconceived notions of gardening. My garden might only last 10 minutes, but that's, that's the beauty of it for me. If, if you, you are lucky enough to, to catch one of the gardens, then, you know, that's, that's the magic of it, you know. You might see, you might not. A bus driver might come and steal it. <laughs> or might, might get run over, but, but hey, that, that, that's the beauty of them.
farming is the, the actual um, term comes from uh, the American kind of activities that have been going on. The bombing part um, refers to this idea of taking things that you've knitted and putting them up on some kind of object that's generally in a public space or, or sort of outdoors. So yarn bombing is, in that way, a version of street art. I work with children, so toddlers and babies, and it's in a sort of different nursery setting. I'm not saying they go exactly hand in hand, because it's not like I can sit there and actually knit, but just their sort of approach to the, the, the children that I work with and the environments that I work in, it feels very creative. And seeing all of that in this kind of microcosm with the children, it helps me to then sort of go home and think, oh, I want to do something fun. I think it's um, something that can brighten up public spaces. And it is this idea that there are things that you can walk past every day and maybe not really even take in. And suddenly if they're covered in lots of colour and wool, then you would actually look at it. And it, so it can draw attention to things like statues and things that are already there. It sort of should bring out the space and work with the space. Knitting and crocheting, just working with uh, wool and, and materials of this sort is it's sort of had a bit of a comeback, I think, for maybe a certain period. Some people, um, it might have felt like a sort of anti... It would have felt against feminism to sort of think, oh, I'm going to go and do this, because at that time it was maybe a case of rebelling and going out and doing something that stereotypically aligned differently. But now it's more of, well, I'm going to do it because I feel I can just make the choice and do what I want to do. I think it's probably always been there that people have always been kind of doing it but now it's that idea of bringing it out in the public and sort of celebrating it I think people feel comfortable with that now. <laughs>
blue people have done that my whole life. I don't really know what it's about. I would like to make a tea tree. That's been my plan. Um, so I want to find a tree somewhere in the middle of town. I think we're going to need to take some duct tape with us so they don't blow away. Um, and hang them up. We've labelled them all so they're all encouraging themselves to get stolen. Um, and hang them up and then go sit and have a coffee and see if anybody helps himself. Writing messages using uh, just cleaning processes or uh, processes that remove a layer of something that already exists that is regarded as redundant. So that could be um, writing your name on the back of a truck with your finger, um, using posters that are out of date. It almost works on everything, but the good ones are the ones where you can see it 100 yards away. So they're the ones that I, I concentrate on, and I've been um, using high-pressure water for quite a few years because that can remove 15 years worth of um, pollution and biological matter. And, um, and, and that's, that's really high contrast and it lasts for ages. So that's my favorite thing at the moment. I've always worked for little independent record labels. That's my big thing. I love music more, much, much more than art. I, I really like street art and, and things based around that kind of thing. But generally walking in an art gallery just makes me go a little bit mad. Um, so music's my thing and I was running a small record label and we didn't have any money to promote the product. There was no um, strategy, I want to be a street artist or I want to become well known for doing this. I just did it as a device for getting recognition for this record and and that was, you know, and then it just, all of a sudden I was a, a street artist with a very unusual idea and I actually thought that I was just passing that idea onto the world. I thought, right, here's a way of doing graffiti in a legal way in front of a policeman. If it goes wrong, you rub it out. It's just a good thing because all you're doing is cleaning. And if 20 kids go down a tunnel and do it, they practically clean the tunnel. So it's a great thing. I'm into pranksterism and counterculture and nonconformism. And I think that I'm not a great artist, but I'm a pretty good prankster. And that's where this this kind of fits into it. Um, I feel like I'm becoming a better artist now, um, out of just practice and also out of feeling quite liberated to do what I want. The fact that I generally choose to use lots of images of nature has a very dark message. And it's just saying, you know, we're losing, we're losing these things. We're losing so many species. We have definitely screwed this planet. I think mostly people like my stuff, especially these days, because it's representative, people can see what it is. But quite often people think you're not supposed to do it, but that's only because you're using spray paint. It's quite true that uh, people who end up doing stuff on the street are kind of, they're looking for a different way of living or they feel like they don't fit in anyway. If you've got a stereotype about someone then it, it is going to be based on some reality and uh, it's unfortunate that, though that just because someone's being an artist doesn't mean they're not also a thug. And a lot of the people who do the New York style graffiti are just kind of bully boys who just happen to be able to draw a bit as well. So some of those people are not very nice people to be around. So that's partly why I don't really mingle with those styles anymore. I think skill and style are more important than trying to prove my manhood to some kids I've never met. But um, street artists are different. They, they, they're not quite as... Um, they don't have to be as bad because they've got a style. And that speaks for them. The thing that sort of keeps me going is people's reactions to these gardens. 
It, it makes people happy. It, it transforms them from these little bubbles. You know, everyone walks around London, central London, in these bubbles. You know, you don't look at each other on the tube. You don't talk to strangers. And somehow these little ephemeral gardens pop that bubble. And people, you can see it, they sort of drop their inhibitions. And the first thing people do when they, when they come across a garden is they'll, they'll do a double take and then they'll look around to see who, who's looking at them. And I find that, that really interesting, that sort of, that, that change in persona of like all of a sudden they're being forced to be connected to, to where they are. Um, you know, and, and their environment is just that little bit more. You know, online you always get some people who, who are faceless online are happy to throw around a negative comment or two. And I had a, an interesting write up in News of the World that was, they called me an artistic numpty. Um, but you've got to have a thick skin about these things. And, you know, if you believe in what you're doing, then I don't really care what other people think. A couple of years ago, I was, uh, I was creating a garden for Time Out. And uh, I was recreating the London Eye in miniature, and I was re uh, replacing the, the pods with little pots. And uh, I was making the garden um, next to the Ministry of Defence. As I do, I just sort of rocked up with my, with my bits and started gardening, and before I knew it, I was sort of almost finished, and a, and a policeman came along. And he said, oh, what do you think you're doing? So I explained. So when he realised what I was doing, he called it in on his radio, uh, told all the, the other police in the area to come and check out this little garden because he thought it was so sweet. One of the things I've struggled with the most in my life is um, labelling this idea that we're expected to fit into a category, um, that, that we cannot just be who we are. So yes, my art is escapism some of the time, because some of the time that's what I need. I don't think escapism is a bad thing. But it's also protest, although I, I, kind of, I always prefer to be for something rather than against anything. I'd rather spot the thing I don't like, think of what the alternative is, and then be for the alternative. So yeah, I think individualism, but, but individualism and, and being aware of the fact that we are herd animals, that's what we are, and, and on this planet, it's a tiny little bubble. So it's that kind of learning to respect your own and other people's um, individuality, um, and yes, escape, and yes, make a statement. I suppose if there's a message behind my art, it's probably summed up in that juicy smile. My artwork tends to be full of little jokes and puns, and, um, and I'll... I think, yeah, making somebody smile would be the ultimate purpose of all of it, really. I do stuff that's silly, you know, and, and it's accessible. It's not so clever that you feel like you can't say anything about it. It's like pretty obvious. I'm not as clever as a lot of artists, I don't think. Um, the street art that I do, I do with a view to it leaving no footprints. So that's, I, I don't really feel that I am committing criminal damage. Um, I may, you may find but, you know that there's a, some plastic cows outside your shop when you arrive in the morning but you can take them away if you're minded to do so I don't, you know or well, there may be some t-shirts hanging on the tree but the idea is that somebody's going to take them away and when they're gone there'll be nothing left um, I think there's a whole sector of humanity that just does not see themselves entering a gallery it just never occurs to them to walk into a gallery and look at artwork I think it is you, you see it on Facebook all the time now, the photos that people post of street art that they've seen places, and it's astonishing the kind of quality of work that's out there for people to see, and um, and you get art whether you've ordered it or not. And you're just walking down the road and all of a sudden staring at the pavement, there's just something beautiful. It just jumps up at you, gives you a kiss, and you carry on your way, and it changes the quality of your day. Fun inspires me, really. Like everybody, if you're having fun or if you do something that's really, really... Your life can be based around doing something cheeky, then I think you've cracked it, and I don't feel like I'm miles away from that. Every mark I make is an environmental message, and it's impossible to ignore that, because what I'm doing is I'm writing in pollution, and I'm showing how dirty the world is, and that's the point of the art. It's kind of a bit beguiling. People look at it, and they're really 
don't know quite how it's happened. And so they, they engage in it and they're really curious and they see something that's really beautiful and then they realise that it's been created in pollution and then it becomes something of a darker message. And that contradiction's really lovely. Mostly I get a positive reaction for what I do. You know, our yummy mummy brighteners. A couple of mums came by with their kids and they made a point of coming up to me and thanking me. And, and I, I nearly cried because I'm just like, I'm actually being a street artist and doing something more or less illegal. And a mum is coming up to me to tell me how much her son had enjoyed my work. And that kind of thing just makes it really, just, just a really worthwhile thing to do. It's not in a gallery, it's unexpected. That's what's great about it. Nobody expects to turn around the corner and see that somebody's gone to the trouble, invested their their love and their time into a shitty wall that nobody's ever cared about, not even the people who made it. Authorities don't know how to deal with it, so they say no. Um, the police have arrested me and couldn't find a good reason for why to hold me in the end. Councils and, and, and the authorities would rather nobody does anything. They just like it boring, just lets everybody stay just like we are. And so I'm the stick up their ass saying, no way. Let's 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 challenge these. Let's challenge these rules. We accept way too much. It's not cool. It's good to question in a harmless way like this. I can only talk from my from my experience and, and really what I'm doing is the same as getting a stick and writing in the sand, you know, and the wind will blow over the sand and it'll disappear. I think something's either gorilla or it's not. Um, you know, I, I do things that are sanctioned by council sometimes. Um, a lot of the time, I, I work out the back of a van. I wear high visibility. I look like I'm a, a, a worker. Uh, I work at, at night. Nobody even notices me. I'm really gorilla. Most of what I do is gorilla. I think it is a way to, to make people smile and hopefully brighten up people's day as they go past. So I like to go on the street and paint things that look beautiful these days because there's too much um, horrible ugliness going on in the street as it is. What I'm doing is I'm writing in pollution and I'm showing how dirty the world is and that's the point of the art. Making somebody smile would be the ultimate purpose of all of it, really. The thing that sort of keeps me going is people's reactions to these gardens.